our job is to create a debate our job is to make universities think right now you people are marginalized from the policy table right now universities are just teaching institutions they do not contribute at all to the policy debate in the country sadly pad has done a book on this and you'll see references to it to it when i go through the what i have i'll try and be as brief as i can right now we do not do any network policy development in fact universities are not even doing any research and that's a sad comment on our society and we should be uh, very careful so our attempt to the psd is like the american economic association like the royal economic society like many other societies to make it an association that is effective not politically we don't want to make it like a bar association we don't want to make it like the engineering council we want to make it an effective um, research body collaboration of ideas and thought and that's what we will try and do now as you can see we have um, we are living in a very very difficult time like it or not we are living in a hugely difficult time the economic crisis is upon us and it's a bad crisis there's so many analysts sitting here ishwar sain is sitting here arun sharif soon shayad kartar salman shah many people are joining us our own faculty faculties of um, butems faculties of university of balochistan faculty of las bela we all know that there is a deep economic crisis at the moment in fact lots of analysts are calling it a defaulted state the finance minister was there the other day arguing it isn't i'm not saying it is defaulted or not i'm not saying that at all i'm just giving you the background we're in a bad state we are in imf program after imf program and yet our universities are silent on this yet our society is silent on this and i think we should take note of that when i see it on tv i see all kinds of people talking about economics but not any of the university professors so this is something that we all need to think about so here we are on the 36th agm in the middle of a crisis but at the same time we are a hyper politicized society everything is politics nobody cares about the default nobody cares about where the economy is tail spinning in fact we've packed together an economy with all kinds of controls and we think we've solved the problem does anybody care about the economy or the 150 million youth so that's what you're going to talk about in this conference and the whole idea is how do we bring you people into the game okay so what you've done is we are trying to create um, in pakistan we create policy by external drivers it's a donors or you know various people who drive the research agenda but we are we are always looking for aid we are not even today as i was coming in i noticed 200 million dollars further loan from the world bank to tackle the hot pollution so that's that's our policy and we are always in the imf program right i'll keep putting up these things you'll see pid research up there i won't talk about it but we do a lot of work on this and we hope that some of you will lead it all of it is outside i hope and if it isn't do tell us please take away whatever you like uh we are public sector think tank we don't necessarily try and make money of our publications although it would be good if you give us some money so here it is a history with the imf 23 imf programs 75 divided by 23 is 5 years each program lasts a year or more we have been in the imf program from day 1 and we have never got out of it those who say we got out of it are mistaken because the imf comes and goes every 2 3 4 years and if you can notice these these figures there the blue line and the green line almost every program we have not completed when you see the green line is above the blue line um uh, sorry blue line is above the green line it shows the program is not completed so much is left a crude indicator but effective so we've always been short in our performance that is the testimony to our economic policy so anybody who comes on tv and says oh this government did this this government did this this government did that that just show them this chart for 75 years there has been no success in this country 
And that's a huge statement to make, but I'm making it, um, and I want you to look at it. IMF program comes and goes, nobody talks about it. Academia is silent. This year, PID put out a commentary on the IMF program. We even had a debate on it on Zoom. Unfortunately, university attendance, I'll tell you, was low. That's why I said PSD is not succeeding. We are not coming together. We are not collaborating. We are not talking. All of us have been to Western universities. We've seen the debates that take place every day there. Every day. I keep telling people that my supervisor, Nobel Prize winner, Gary Becker, sat in a seminar every day till his dying day. Every, sorry, Tuesday. Till his dying day, he sat and listened. He didn't talk. He sat and listened. This is a a culture change that we have to hear. In our conferences, people come to talk, not to listen. So that's a huge thing. Then the second thing is, universities don't talk about the growth agenda of Pakistan. Pahid has developed a growth agenda. Again, hopefully you'll get it outside. The growth agenda is very important to the country. And I think the universities should own both these things, both the um, IMF program and the, and the um, uh, growth agenda. IMF program comes and goes and universities are silent. No students are doing their theses on this. And I really worry about that. Why are we not a part of the debate? Okay. So here is some facts about Pakistan. Very simple facts. This is a signature chart. PID shows it every time. Our growth rate is volatile. That chart shows you growth rate over the last, I think, six, um, 50 years or something. Our growth rate is very volatile. Long-term growth is falling. Declining. This should be a big wake-up call to everybody in the country, but nobody wants to talk about it. Secondly, if you, if you go down, you'll see we have the lowest investment rate in Asia. It's always been low. Not that it happened yesterday or tomorrow. Not that it happened in this government, that government. It's been traditionally low. So this TV discussion that this government did better than that government should stop. It's a collective failure of every government, not one government or the other. This chart is enough. And I hope Kamran Khan or somebody would take it up and show it. Because we have not invested in this country for the last 75 years. So let's wake up everybody and students wake up and tell us what's happening. This chart is also very important. Our productivity is declining. A nation that is not productive. Tons of research to show you that. In fact, Paul Romer, my classmate, got the Nobel Prize for this. A nation that is not productive goes nowhere. Our productivity is declining. We've got a national productivity organization, but it doesn't do productivity. Productivity doesn't figure on the cabinet table or anything. So that's a huge thing that we should see. Right? We've done studies on productivity. Umar Sadiq is here. He's done a few studies on productivity. Which, is, which are fascinating, which you should look at. Detailed studies of productivity. Most interestingly, the export sector is the lowest productivity in the country. Because it's subsidized. Subsidized sectors don't show productivity. We show that very clearly. Manufacturing doesn't show the productivity services do. We've shown all this very clearly. National Productive Office, Cabinet Division, everybody, nobody is interested in that. So that's a very important subject that we should focus on and discuss. These are Omar's studies. I won't go into those. Now, the stock market, or should I say the non-existent stock market. A stock market, when I was a kid, was 20% of GDP. Harun Sharif used to be on the, a commissioner in the stock market. Now it's come down to 10%. The tradable stock is 5%. So a stock market is shrinking. And students, you must do a thesis on this. Faculty, somebody should talk about why a stock market is shrinking. We've done a few papers on this. Mehbubullah used to say, 22 families own Pakistan. We've discovered... It's only 31 families, not 22 families. So we've gone from 22 to 31 in 50 years. That's a huge statement. We've seen that the board of governors of the PS, SX, PSX 100 is basically synth club membership. No more. It's cronyism at its height and nobody talks about it. Hey, that doesn't figure. It's which government did this and which government did that. I mean, it doesn't matter which government did it. Because the structural reform remains undone. I know my friend Mifta Ismail, who couldn't make it here today, talks about the 1%. But who is the 1%? Let's identify it. The 1% is very clear. Sitting in Sindh Club, sitting in Islamabad Club, and various. We are going to bring this lady over who's done a thesis on this called Big Capital, Big Ideas, I forget now. 
she's a South African woman who came here and did a thesis on um, Pakistani policy making. And she's going to come in, uh, I think, March and talk to us. We do a lot of webinars and we do a lot of webinars deliberately. We do them with all kinds of people, Pakistanis as well as foreigners. And I hope that you people will listen in because that's what we need to do to make the Pakistan Society for Development Economics to make us work together. So we've got, look at our indicators. We've got very poor productivity, yet, and I emphasize this, and I'll keep emphasizing it again and again. Little research and universities are out of the debate. So we are teaching students economics, and when I interview them, I can't hire them. Why are we teaching kids economics when they don't know economics? So they learn an indifference curve model, but they know nothing about the real world. They know no nothing about productivity, employment, etc., etc. And that's why we are urging you to talk to the PST and think about how we do things. So what are we doing here? This is our, how can research work? We have built universities, 260 universities, and we did a paper on this, no professors. Per university, we've calculated there are three or four professors. We looked at Harvard, Yale, etc. There are five, six hundred full professors. We're not talking about adjunct faculty and those tuition centers. Full professors, all these universities have 3,000, 4,000 full professors. Here we don't have full professors, but we build more and more universities. People are already building too. Research, we did a book on research. There is hardly any research. Sorry, forget it. There's no demand for research in the country. There's no demand. Nobody demands research, so why should we do any research? We might as well sit in, on our haunches and say, hey, guys, pay us a salary and we won't do any research. And that's where we are at the moment. So I'm sorry to say this, but that's a fact. Our view is we need ideas in this country, ideas for change. And we can go through back and forth. I've written a book on this. Ideas lead to change. We can keep blaming the politicians, we can keep blaming all the institutions, the establishment, this, that, etc. But we are short of ideas. It's our fault. Nobody else's fault. When the Reformation happened, when the Renaissance happened, there were ideas. It didn't happen without ideas. So if we are short of ideas, I'm sorry, this space is going to be filled up by whoever is there because nature can't stand a vacuum. So here, we heard about the Charter of Economy. Everybody told me, what kind of a title, title is this? We heard about the Charter of Economy and we said, hey, why shouldn't the universities make the Charter of Economy? Why should we leave it to the politicians? Of course, they will eventually endorse it. Of course, but they're not the fountain of ideas. The fountain of ideas is the university. So you guys should be putting up ideas and then the politicians, etc., can pick it up and bless it or not bless it or whatever, right? I mean, decision making is obviously not your job, but idea development is your job and you should be doing it. So that's why we thought, hey, let's do this at this conference. And what is our Charter of Economy? Our Charter of Economy has to focus on employment, investment, and productivity. Those are the three goals of the economy that we must focus on. Now, of course, people will say, talk about the current account, talk about the reserves, and I, full disclosure, I come from the IMF. So, of course, my training is to look at reserves, current account, etc., etc. Look, that is a byproduct of the domestic economy. We can always crunch the current account like we are doing now to behave itself. But it has long-term consequences. We've done that many times. We've written a paper on this, five currency crises in the country. This country has five currency crises, which we've analyzed very carefully. Each of the crises, we took the wrong policy. It didn't need to happen. It happened because we crunched the economy wrongly. And then, of course, eventually you pay with the current exchange rate. That simple first-year macroeconomics. But ultimately, if there's no productivity, you will have your current account crisis again and again. So that's where we are trying to go. So what do we do about the Charter of the Economy? Well, of course politics enters. People tell me you can't separate politics from economics. Agreed. But then we have to talk about the politics. It's not that we are trying to get into the civil military debate or we are trying to get into all this nonsense that people say. But we do know there is a subject called constitutional economics. Buchanan got the Nobel Prize for it. There are so many other people who wrote about it. Hayek wrote a book called The Constitutional Liberty. We can talk about constitutional economics and we must. The constitution is the framework in which people work. So yes, nobody is saying change the constitution or whatever, but hey, there are ways economists have studied all the way from Condorcet to now, voting systems, we can talk about. There's a number of things that we can talk about and we've got a whole paper, we'll give it to you, that guys, 
there must be a negotiated settlement. But that negotiated settlement is not about who's going to rule, like the Charter of Democracy. It's about what is the framework of governance. And it's not about changing the con uh, constitution, it's about how to tweak the election system, how to tweak the, the way the government plays its role, how to tweak the way decision making is uh, working. And we can, we've got endless things that we can talk about. And most important of all that people talk about, you know, I know all you, of you want it, but let's talk about it and let's bring it up on the table. Why not local government? That's where it should begin. Our policy everywhere must change. Most important of all, I used to be in the Planning Commission. We've written a book on the Planning Commission. Guys, the Planning Commission is broken. Either kill it, I was telling Ishrat yesterday, either kill it or fix it. But put it on the table, talk about it. The PSTP is now nine trillion in throw forward. It'll take 20 years on the current PSTP money to finish it. So damn it, that just doesn't work. And we think that we, this is another idea that we have. We think we don't need to work. Everything must be done by the foreigner. Hey, EU give us some aid. ECPIC give us some aid. Hey, what's our responsibility? So as Shahid Karda is going to be here just now, we keep joking all the time. We will play golf while everybody else comes and fixes, fixes the country. Is that what we want to do? So yeah, we should think about it, right? Okay. So the question is, how can universities come in? Our research framework is there, uh, sorry, growth framework, and we'll talk to you about it. Our feeling is, first of all, we must put research into policy. Right now, policy happens on a whim, or, forgive me, Ambassador, but some donor's suggestion. And there are 100 donors, we've done, done a study on that. They keep coming up with different suggestions. The government is al almost always confused. I, when I was in the planning commission, I used to entertain donors like eight hours a day, and I had one hour to do something else. So, you know, we have to be clear. Where is our universities? What is our agenda? Can we discuss an agenda? Is the agenda always shifting and moving on whims? And I think that we have to do. So, we don't have a plan anymore. Not that I'm, I'm from Chicago, so I, hey, I hate plans. But, okay, growth policy. Hey, what do you want? Medium-term budget. Even the IMF says there's a medium term. Even the US has a 10-year medium term budget. Some countries, I think Finland is going to a 50-year medium term budget or something. We don't even have a medium term budget. Yeah, we have one, sorry, that was given to us by EU and DFID, lying in the Ministry of Finance, but totally inoperative, which is three years run by a consultant, OPM, Oxford Policy Management, and nobody looks at it, nobody takes it seriously. Last year, I think the McKinsey people took it up, but it is not taken seriously. We don't look at it. So the Planning Commission either is a medium term budget place or it isn't. So either close it down, or on it. And this is something that we should again, you guys should think about it. It's very important. We've talked about it a lot. And uh, this is something that you can think about. Well, then we need to go deeper. I told you this thinking stock market, industrial organization. What is the industrial organization in the country? We've got the same industries with the same proportion of the GDP as when I was growing up. And as you can see, I'm 40 years old, so even 20 years is a lot of time, right? But I can tell you it's much longer than that, for God's sakes. For the last 50 years, we had the same thing. Textile, cement, fertilizer. So textile, cement, fertilizer, sugar. I mean, hey, when is this going to change? What is an industrial organization? What is the concentration ratio there? We're just calculating those and it's, it's quite bizarre. It's quite bizarre. And so you have to think about it. Real estate, people talk about real estate. We've talked about cities a lot. Yesterday, we presented you a whole documentary on that. Our cities are badly configured, badly managed, because nobody wants to think about them. Real estate has become a boom in this country, but let me tell you, there is no real estate market in this country. I make this statement very advisedly. I make a very bold statement. There is no real estate market in this country. Why? Because the market is where information is available and you know what is being traded where and we don't have that. The government deliberately doesn't set it up with the result that we keep talking about uh, Kabza Mafia. Kabza Mafia thrive when there's no information. So why is there no information? And that's a problem that you have. So lots of things that you can talk about. And then of course what we've done is, yeah, this is very critical. Ambassador, we've got a population under 23 is 50% of our population. 50% of population is under 23, and guess what? There are no opportunities. Youth is 
We got a survey, I won't go into it in detail, we'll tell you. Huge amount of issues of youth. Is anyone interested? No. Will these kids get a job? I won't make my prediction. I don't think they will. So, it's a huge issue. Okay, we've done so many studies on employment, I won't go in there. We'll take them up as we go along. Uh, we've talked about the growth policy. Okay. All three things, everything intersects where? Something that Ishwet has been talking about for a long time. We are running a 19th century administrative system in this country. People who are still reluctant to use the internet. People who are still reluctant to, to change their ways to even using the file electronically. We still have paper files. Everything comes down. Our cities being, are being run by the same group. Everything is run by the same group. We've got a deep problem here that we should talk about. So, our Charter of Economy, very briefly, my time is coming to end, I'll, end, I'll say, we have to think about making a coherent policy. We have to think about Charter of Economy. Very briefly, I'll show you the things that I have on this. Um, so first, we have to fix our politics. We'll go into that during the conference. On the economy side, we'll think about the civil service and all kinds of reform that needs to be done. We have to talk about that. On the, um, again, administration, we have to talk about the civil service reform, about how policy is made, who does the research, who does the thinking, who does the M&D. We have to get granular, we have to get nitty gritty. We don't just simply say, hey, we've got a report now, just implement it. The standard refrain in Pakistan is we've got a report implemented. And I don't think it, things work that way. This is the biggest problem that we've got. Sludge. We've done a study on regulation. This country is being stifled under the yoke of regulation. NOCs. I wake up every day and I spend three hours doing trivial details. Like everyone will call me, give me a copy of your ID card. So I have to deliver a copy of my ID card. They've got my thumbprint, but they want to take it every time. I have to give my thumbprint every two days. When technology comes in, it works against us. I have to give my thumbprint every two days. When you want to set up, for example, you want to set up, set up a, make a building of flats, it takes you four years of permissions. From, so we've calculated all those. There's a book, Sludge Audit, and we calculated that 40% of GDP, only in a few activities, is lost due to the administrative burden of the country. All we have to do is get rid of the NOC. But nobody can get rid of the NOC. NOC is where a lot of... There are other things too, but we can talk about that. So, okay, so we go into so many. One thing that we don't like to do decentralization, we hate. Autonomization, we hate. Professionalization, we hate. You can't make a professional appointment in this country. You make a professional appointment, God, they're up in arms. How can you make a professional appointment? This appointment has to go to the civil service. Even nitty gritty little things, and we can't change it. This is right, everybody's right, can't do it. So there are no professionals anywhere in the government. The whole energy system is stifled, dying because there are no professional appointments. At best, we have a bunch of bankers in Synth Club who we appoint. That's all. Who are all our friends. That doesn't matter. Uh, then we've got... Um, then we've got a charter of economy. Nobody evaluates government agencies. We've done the first evaluation. We've done about five evaluations. Guys, why can't we evaluate government agencies? We call up uh, government agents, we want to evaluate you. They're so shocked, we get rude letters saying, don't you dare. Literally rude letters. What was the letter that we got from, uh, we, we called up, what, what was that agency? Uh, huh? Evacuate Trust. We said we want to evaluate you. They said the authority has, what was the thing? Please to reject your proposal. <laughs> Evacuate Trust has been holding all our real estate Hostage for the last 70 years, nobody talks about it. So that's what you're trying to do. But hey, nobody talks. That should be in the Charter of Economy. Transactions, nobody worries about transactions. GDP, the way I look at it, if you look at Ronald Coase, over there, GDP is the sum of transactions. If you look at our transactions in this economy, this economy is stifling because we don't have enough transactions. So we should talk about that. Finally, cities. Our cities are a disaster. Because you don't manage cities, we have absolutely crazy, so we have to talk about that. Dead capital. We keep talking about it. Large part of... Ambassador, I don't know whether in your country you get palaces when you're in the public service. Here we get palaces, we get cars, we get this. So that's what we call dead capital. And all this public sector land. So we are working on that too. 
and then we look at huh what oh sludge no, we've talked about sludge okay so there it is folks this conference is all about what i said i'll leave you here please help us build psd this year we're going to take several new initiatives on psd to truly make it your organization we want to take it out of pied and make it your organization pied will only be the secretary we want to give it to you but we have to think up a credible framework on how to do it and i'll be working with all of you hopefully this year we'll be able to do it thank you folks all the best